you can exit that way, yeah.
May we pray? Our good and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this great institution called Anderson University, whose staff and faculty believe in, adhere to, and teach your word. Thank you for these soon-to-be graduates gathered before us who are better prepared to face the world because of their time here. Lord, we come before you today to celebrate the accomplishment of these students. Thank you for sending them to this special place to gain knowledge in their chosen field. Thank you for letting them increase in wisdom and how to love others better and how to serve you through their words and actions. Thank you for the friendships they have made and the experiences they have enjoyed. Lord, we know that the road has not always been easy for some have experienced difficulties and loss. We pray that even in the hard times of life, they have learned to depend on you to be with them and give them strength. We thank you for protecting and guiding them to this point. As they leave Anderson University, we ask that you inspire these graduates to use the knowledge they have gained, the skills they have learned, and the life lessons they have seen live before them by staff and faculty for the benefit of others and for your glory. Let them live lives of service, generosity, and compassion to make a difference in the lives of others and in the world. Help them always to remember that the greatest wisdom of all is that of knowing Jesus Christ and the power of the cross. Grant them faith, courage, and a sense of purpose. Help them use their gifts and talents wisely and be willing to go boldly and confidently wherever you call them. Let them follow as you lead them into the future with faith, hope, goodness, and great love. Keep their footsteps firm. May your word be a constant lamp for their feet and a light to their path. Give them deep and abiding trust in you, Lord. Instill within them hope for the new paths you have planned for them. Strengthen them to run the race well. Allow them to continue to flourish and bring you glory. Father, we thank you for each graduate, for letting them spend time on this campus or studying online at home, for the opportunity of sharing our faith and knowledge with them, for the friendships they have made, and for the places they will go and the influence they will have because of their time here. We ask you to continue to guide, protect, and use them to enrich your kingdom. All these things we ask in the holy name of Jesus.
Good afternoon. On behalf of the Board of Trusts, the administration, faculty, and staff, it is my pleasure to welcome you to these December commencement exercises in the 112th academic year of Anderson University. Today, we reenact a ritual with roots in medieval Europe, and though it's steeped in ancient tradition, it is filled with the joy, excitement, and anticipation of a festive celebration of achievement. Graduates, this afternoon, we celebrate your accomplishments and we celebrate you. How proud this institution is of you and your accomplishments. And now, the only thing that stands between you and your diploma is this ceremony. But you know, ceremonies are important, aren't they? They signify important transitions. So I invite you to really enjoy this moment, to focus your thoughts and emotions on this rare, rich, and beautiful moment during this Christmas season. We want to extend a special welcome to the families and friends of our graduates. We rejoice with you today in the accomplishments of these that you love so dearly. This university is grateful to you for all that you have done to support and love your graduates through their educational journey. Another special group of individuals that I would like to recognize are perhaps um, children in the audience. Uh, we may even have a couple of babies in the audience. I think I heard one or two earlier. And I would like to welcome you especially and to invite you to pick up some admission material on the way out of your, uh, the ceremony today. <clears throat> It never start too early. To all who gather here, we welcome you. And to those of you who will be honored here, we salute you and celebrate this exceedingly special time in your life. As is our custom during commencement, commencement in December, we're pleased to welcome our faculty chair to deliver the commencement address. Our faculty chair this year is Dr. Patty Jean Slaughter. Dr. Slaughter is Professor of Psychology and Chair of the Behavioral Sciences Department. She was born in Asmara, Ethiopia, where her parents were teachers working with the Peace Corps. After moving back to the States, her family settled in New York, where she grew up as a New York Yankees and New York Giants fan. Her parents were both lifelong educators, and in high school, Dr. Slaughter promised herself and declared to the world that she was never going to be a teacher. Well, she didn't keep that promise, of course. She's been teaching in higher education for over 25 years and is finishing her 12th year teaching here at Anderson University. She is a licensed psychologist in New York and North Carolina and has worked in several practice settings, including schools, churches, community mental health centers, and private practice. While she enjoys doing clinical work, Dr. Slaughter loves teaching and mentoring college students one of the things that she's known for among her students is wearing crazy colored socks with her Chaco sandals. <clears throat> our faculty members do have personality. Dr. Slaughter has been married to her husband, Dane, for almost 30 years, and they have two amazing daughters, Jaden, who is an officer in the U.S. Navy studying in the Naval uh, physician uh, therapist program, and Kaylin is a junior, college junior, studying mechanical engineering in Tennessee. In her free time, she says that she enjoys reading, running, and spending time with her family. One of the things that I know about Dr. Slaughter, having known her for these 12 years, is that she is a wonderful teacher, an excellent teacher, but more than that, she's a wonderful person. And it's my pleasure to give you our commencement speaker, Dr. Patty Jean Slaughter, at this time. Okay, there's a note on here that says, please get them closer to the mic. So here I go. All right, so, ooh, thank you, Dr. Whitaker, for that wonderful introduction. Welcome to the Board of Trust, University Administration, faculty, staff, guests, but particularly to our graduates, congratulations. Woohoo! you made it! Yes, I deserve the big woo -hoo. Yes. 
I do have on colorful, crazy socks today, but no chacos. I, I figured this was a more formal occasion, so I opted for more formal shoes. I am so honored to share the next few minutes with you. We've got some wonderful students who are graduating today, and I couldn't be more, feel more privileged to, to share the next few minutes with you. I actually asked some of my students who are graduating today what they hoped to hear in a commencement address, and they told me, ah, Dr. S, don't worry about it. No matter what you say, it's going to be awesome. So here goes. I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> Good job. Good luck. God bless. Goodbye. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would that I were being so brief, and my sincere apologies to all my colleagues back here for the briefest moment in time thought that I had delivered the shortest commencement address in all of commencement address history and now are a little bummed that I'm not finished. My apologies. <laughs> in all seriousness, congratulations, graduates, on what I hope you think has been time well spent here at AU. And now I think you're quite ready for another adventure. And extra credit for anybody who knows what character in literature also said he was ready for another adventure. Oh wait, you don't need extra credit, you're graduating, never mind. And I don't give extra credit anyway. <laughs> Graduates, you're ready. You're ready for the next phase of your journey. And in order to set you off on your next adventure, I'd like to read an excerpt from one of my very favorite children's books, The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams, which, fun fact, was first published 100 years ago in 1922. So graduates, if you'd like, you can imagine we're sitting in class one final time. And if you've ever had class, in the Watkins building in the basement in room 002. You'll understand what I mean when I say you can imagine we're sitting in a circle of bright yellow chairs. Here's part of the story, The Velveteen Rabbit, or How Toys Become Real by Marjorie Williams. There was once a velveteen rabbit, and in the beginning, he was really splendid. He was fat and bunchy, as a rabbit should be. His coat was spotted brown and white. He had real thread whiskers, and his ears were lined with pink sateen. On Christmas morning, when he sat wedged in the top of the boy's stocking with a sprig of holly between his paws, the effect was charming. For a long time, he lived in the toy cupboard or on the nursery floor, and no one thought very much about him. He was naturally shy, and being made of only velveteen, some of the more expensive toys quite snubbed him. The mechanical toys were very superior and looked down upon everyone else. They were full of modern ideas and pretended they were real. Between them all, the poor little rabbit was made to feel himself very insignificant and commonplace and the only person who was kind to him at all was the skin horse. The skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the others. He was so old that his brown coat was bald in patches and showed the seams underneath, and most of the hairs in his tail had been pulled out to string bead necklaces. He was wise for he had seen a long succession of mechanical toys arrive to boast and swagger, and by and by break their main springs and pass away. And he knew that they were only toys and would never turn into anything else, for nursery magic is very strange and wonderful, and only those playthings that are old and wise and experienced, like the skin horse, understand all about it. What is real? asked the rabbit one day when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender before Nana came to tidy the room. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and a stick out handle? Real isn't how you're made, said the skin horse. It's something that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Oh. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, 
for he was always truthful. But when you're real, you don't mind being hurt. Hmm. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you're real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. I suppose you are real, he said, and then wished he hadn't said it because he thought the skin horse might be sensitive. But the skin horse only smiled. The boy's uncle made me real, he said. That was a great many years ago. But once you are real, you can't become unreal again. It lasts for always. I could, and maybe I should, stop right there and let the text speak for itself. But I'd like to encourage you with a few thoughts from this excerpt. Graduates, life is going to have its rewards and its challenges, its ups and its downs. Embrace them all. Cultivate meaningful relationships and surround yourself with people who appreciate and respect you. And in the process, ignore all the haters. Find your skin horse. And maybe someday, as you're able, you can be the skin horse for somebody else. Don't think too highly of yourself. No boasting, no swaggering. Be kind, be humble, be gracious, and be patient. Avoid being someone who breaks easily, has sharp edges, and must be carefully kept. At the same time, graduates, live a life of authenticity and genuineness. Don't try to be or even pretend to be someone or something you aren't. Oh, graduates, allow yourself to love and be loved. Develop intimate, deep connections with other people. And even when loving others and or being loved leaves you feeling worn and looking shabby, never regret loving and being loved. Remember, you can never be ugly to people who truly understand. And graduates, being loved by others and loving others in return will change you, no doubt about it. Being loved by God and accepting the gift of his love in and through faith in Jesus will change you infinitely more. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Behold, the old has passed away and the new has come. And there it is. Do you see it? This is the ultimate answer to the rabbit's original question. Graduates, what's real? New life in Christ. That is what's real. So AU, December class of 2022, as you say goodbye to this place and begin your next adventure, may you know the love of Jesus. May you grasp how high and how wide and how long and how deep his love is for you. May you know this love, it makes you new. May you know this love, it makes you real. And may you know this love, it lasts for always. Thank you. We now come to the central purpose of today's ceremony, the conferring of degrees. Will the candidates for degrees please rise? <coughs> President Whitaker, the students who stand before you are candidates for degrees in the class of 2022, and their qualifications have been verified by the faculty. It is my pleasure to present this class to you for the conferring of their degrees. Thank you, Dr. Neal. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trust and according to the provisions of the charter granted to Anderson University by the State of South Carolina, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree for which you are a candidate with all of the rights, honors, and privileges thereunto appertaining. You may be seated.
I see that the Doctor of Physical Therapy students have all moved their tassel to the left side. If those of the rest of you who have not done so, go ahead and move it to the left. One of the core values and great virtues of Anders University is hospitality. And it's in that, in the interest of hospitality and our requests that you honor our view on ceremony like commencement. And it is that we do view it as a ceremony. Uh, we are indoors, but you'll notice there's, uh, this is not a gymnasium, there's not a court, uh, there's not a rink. And with respect to uh, Dr. Bert Epting, Vice President of Athletics, and to our student athletes graduating today, this is not an athletic competition. So we ask the uh, audience who are not in stands, but rather uh, seated in an auditorium, not to scream, yell, holler, make boisterous noise. I suppose we have a caveat for babies. Uh, but the rest of you, uh, we ask that you, uh, rather than yell and scream at when your loved one's name is called, if you would please stand in honor of their achievement. Uh, that is what, how we'd like you to recognize your candidate, your graduate, your loved one when their name is called. At the end, we will take several minutes, and that's usually what it takes to exhaust all the noise that is uh, pent up inside of you. Take several minutes, and you can yell and scream as much as you wish uh, at the end of the ceremony once all names are called. Additionally, if you have not already done so, please silence your cell phones. Please avoid going into the aisles for photography. And thank you again for uh, granting our request uh, to make this a meaningful ceremony for everyone. Will the graduates now come forward to receive their diplomas? I will call the names of the graduates by college or school and the diplomas will be presented by President Whitaker. As I call the name of the graduates, I will indicate those who are graduating with honors. In your program, you'll find the standards which these individuals met in order to be designated as honor graduates. I will also indicate those students who have been elected to membership in the Denmark Society. This society is made up of members of the graduating class who have exhibited leadership, campus citizenship, scholarship, and Christian character. The name of the society is derived from the late president of Anderson University, Dr. Annie Dove Denmark. Students selected for membership in this society are wearing honor cords. Brittany Ray Moffitt. Charita Serrano Sherrod. Amanda Cassandra Sweeney. Elizabeth Ann Stewart Whitman. Kayla Ashley Anderson.
Bryce Joseph Austin. Luke Ethan Bolt. Kyle Thomas Bowen. Spencer Darris Brothers. Maggie Elizabeth Camp. Emily Dale Cates. Christopher Philip Clary. Thomas Vincent Colavito. Dallas Blair Elizabeth Davenport. Amanda Renee Fullwood. Courtney Brown Hathaway. Aaron Christopher Higgins. Joshlyn Carlisa Martin. Emily Peak Matthews.
Mackenzie Haley Mayberry. Perry David Neal the second. Samantha Lee Newell. Brianna Nicole Petratus. Taylor Marie Rochester. Sydney Catherine Rogers. Bennett Verl Smith. Dallas Lee Sweat. Kylie Toms Spots. Alex Bailey Vite. Andrew Keith Campbell. Ola B. Dunshushin. Natalie Dawn Davis. Christian Alexandria Dix. Stephanie Nicole Fisher. Lauren McLean Hunter. Tierra Shimon Izzard. Latasha Nicole Keller. Hannah Grace Sigwald.
Hosea Gibet Koech. Cassie Page Levine. Oraduni Ogun Todu. Samantha Jill Shaw. Emma Lynn Fabry, magna cum laude. Jane Catherine Twig Hamadi, magna cum laude. Macaulay Blackwell. Erica Kimietta Fielder. Kayla Page Arnaud. Jacob Thomas Brandenburg. Olivia Grace DiDonato. Jackson Thomas Dempsey, Denmark Society. Elizabeth Hope Gallat. Liliana E. Kinder. Yvonne Margaret Massey, summa cum laude, Denmark Society. Mackenzie Nicole Osborne, cum laude. Mackenzie Blaine Roberts. Thomas Patrick Sutcliffe. Kaylee Alexandra Williams. Elise Andrews Beaver, cum laude. Maggie Ann Bryant, cum laude. Kaylin Ann Carr, cum laude. Caitlin Marie Clary, magna cum laude. Abigail Amanda Klingscales, cum laude. Kristen Mackenzie Cobb, magna cum laude. Audrey Grace Crowder, cum laude. Crystal Aileen Drummond, summa cum laude. Amanda Ashley Fasick. Carly Ryan Gwill, magna cum laude. Taylor Alexis Hayes, magna cum laude. Mary Holland Holcomb, summa cum laude. Nadia Marie Johnson. Jenna Caitlin Krakus.
Madalena Grace Long. Rachel Lauren Meringer, cum laude, Denmark Society. Heather Elise Miles. Jordan Alexis Moorhead, cum laude, Denmark Society. Samantha Elizabeth Oakley, cum laude. Weston Luke Penrod, cum laude. Allison Miles Powell, magna cum laude. Luke Screven Quarterman. Kelsey Lee Rivera, magna cum laude. Elena Brooke Robinson, cum laude. Jared Daniel Stebbins, cum laude. Allie Page Thornton, cum laude. Stephanie Coburn Fuller. Rebecca Gambrell Hegwood. Michaela Danielle Lane. Emirate Cameron Boyce, summa cum laude. Brianna Dawn Holder. Sarah Grace Porter. Ivy Eileen Whitaker, magna cum laude, Denmark Society. Lydia Wienza Namazi Saremba, summa cum laude, Denmark Society. Thomas Henry Dodson, cum laude. Nathaniel Monroe Harriff. Lowry Brantley Kinney. Stephen James Williams. Justin Andrew Helms. Brian Thomas Thacker. Cole Livingston Brannan. Dustin Kenneth Manwaring. Carl Brent Thompson. Lorenzo Terrell Bennett.
Lily M. Newbill. Dion Bennett. Ian Luke Morrill, summa cum laude. David Turner. James Aiken Cox, magna cum laude, Denmark Society. Eliana Maria Rivas, summa cum laude. Jenna Danielle Bright, magna cum laude. Olivia Nicole Jones, magna cum laude. Bailey Kathleen Kelly Bill, cum laude. Parker Michelle Marin. Elise Harrison Martin. Noah Richard McKnight. Kenneth Bradley Bennett. Susanna Brucker. Logan Connor Wires, cum laude, Denmark Society. Rayana Hope Kroll, summa cum laude, Denmark Society. Corey Janae Benton. Lissa Dover. Emily Williamson. Ashley Elrod. Britt Callahan. W.C. Honeycutt, Jr.
Uh, audience, audience, um, that was fine and very nice, um, but you started before I invited you to do that, so I'm, I'm going to invite you to do it again, and this time, show a little heart with it, okay? Go. Thank you. Well, that was a little better. <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you so much. These graduates certainly deserve our applause and our well wishes. I'm going to share with you graduates uh, uh, one or the reality before you leave today. I have some remarks in just a moment, but I want to share with you a couple of practical realities. And that is, I don't know if you thought about it, uh, especially for those of you in the back uh, who got your diplomas last. Um, I shook hands with, I don't know, maybe 150 people. So that means you shook hands with 150 people. And it being flu season, after the ceremony, you know what to do, right? You don't want anybody to get sick because of commencement. Um, one other, someone said they don't care. Um, one other um, thing that I always get asked a lot is um, how much does the medallion weigh? And it's about, I don't know, 20 pounds or so. Uh, so that's why I have a steel rod in my back now from having worn this thing for a few years. But um, graduates, this actually is the transition, the moment of transition. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the exclusive fellowship of Anderson University alumni. Even so, commencement does not mark an ending but rather a beginning. And each moment of your future is a commencement and is filled with choice and possibility. The choices you make and the actions you take from this moment forward will determine how extraordinary your life will be. And we believe that you will all live extraordinary lives. At Anderson, we talk a lot, metaphorically speaking, about life as a journey and it is our prayer today that we have made good on our promise to give you a good portion of the knowledge that each graduate needs for the journey that lies ahead of you. And though your lives will be filled with choice and change, there is a constant a pit, all you, you can always rely, and that is that your life and the life of Anderson University are forever linked. When you succeed, Anderson University succeeds because we are known by the character and the achievements of our alumni. When Anderson University succeeds, you succeed because the reputation and value of your degree will appreciate by whatever advances the reputation of the university. You will depart these grounds today as former students, but I encourage you to keep the spirit of this place alive within your hearts forever. Come back often and get involved in alumni activities and volunteer capacities that will help shape the future of Anderson University and give generously as you can as others before you have invested their lives and their resources so that you could have this rare experience of Christian higher education. And I take this opportunity to remind you of the deep desire and loving prayer of your professors, administrators, trustees, and staff. And that is that you make Jesus Christ the model for your life. Borrowing the words of Ken Gear to always be open to the words and the voice of God as he molds you and shapes you into his image. We encourage you to handle his words accurately, reverently, and with responsibility, for they are the words from the everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Gear says, I saw a reflection of this truth glinting off a small pool of Tennyson's words. The scene is King Arthur's castle where he is knighting a handful of loyal men who would be called upon to risk their lives in his service. <clears throat> Arthur sat crowned on the dais and his warriors cried, be thou the king and we will work thy will who love thee. 
Then the king, in low, deep tones and simple words of great authority, bound them by so straight vows to his own self, that when they rose, knighted from kneeling, some were pale as at the passing of a ghost, some flushed and others dazed as one who wakes half blinded at the coming of a light. But when he spake and cheered his table round with large, divine, and comfortable words, beyond my tongue to tell thee, I beheld from eye to eye through all their order flash a momentary likeness of the king. And so, equipped with the knowledge and the wisdom that the Anderson University experience has given you, depart from this place today with the eternal knowledge that whatever your vocation, you were created to serve with all of your human perfections and the likeness of the King of Kings. And always remember the imagery of this beautiful season in which you graduate, Christmas, especially the imagery of the Magi. They, after all, were wise and knowledgeable, much like you, yet they sought out a child born in a major and they worshiped him. Remember that. And remember that you always have membership in this Christian academic community called Anderson University, where in this season of joy over the birth of that child, we are eager to say with one voice, be thou the king, and we will work thy will who love thee. And now strain forward to what lies ahead. Press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God. Hold true to what you have attained. Then you will be ready for whatever your journey of life has in store for you. A joy to the Lord Jesus Christ who redeems you and walks beside you. And a delight to God the Father who created you. And one final thing, long live your dear alma mater. Long live Anderson. Long live Anderson. Thank you and congratulations again. Now would you all please stand for the singing of the Centennial Alma Mater. At the conclusion of the benediction, the audience is asked to remain standing at your seat as the platform party of the faculty and graduate exit the auditorium. Now Sherelle Duxworth will lead us in the benediction. What a privilege it is to offer this benediction to close out the culmination of God's grace, kindness, mercy, and guidance shown to each graduate. If you would please, bow and join me in prayer. 
O majestic and triune God, as we stand in union with your Son, we approach your throne, throne of grace with prayers for the faculty and staff of this great institution, the parents of our graduates, and most importantly, the 2022 graduating class. Lord, we thank you for sending these graduates to AU, for entrusting us with such precious image bearers. I pray that we as faculty and staff have stewarded the time that we have had with these graduates well, that we have been merciful, gracious, and compassionate to them, that we have encouraged them in their faith, in their studies, and have spoken truth and grace to their ears. I pray for the parents of these graduates. May they continue to offer wise counsel, love, support, and discipleship to their children. May they be encouraged as they watch their children leave the nest. May they relinquish control over their children, remembering that you see them and you bestow grace on them. Lord, we pray for our graduates. Thank you for sending us wise, smart, teachable, funny, hopeful, and eager students. They have worked tire tirelessly and have made it to this point because of their vision, hard work, and perseverance. As they close this chapter of their lives, we pray your protection over them, and we ask that you will remind them that they are not their failures or successes, but they are your children. Ensure them that they can trust you to lead them in the next phase of their life. Lord, plant stones of remembrance in their minds and hearts so that when they are pulled to distrust and doubt, they may recall your past faithfulness in their lives. Surround each of them with wise counsel as they take new jobs as pastors, teachers, counselors, engineers, designers, health professionals, and creative artists. May they use their knowledge, gifts, and vocation to bring you glory, and may they contribute positively to the world. May they flourish individually, but also as leaders, parents, followers of Christ, spouses, and friends. May they be gracious with their parents as they adjust to them leaving the nest. May they have a heart for seeing people come to faith. And Lord, for those students who don't know you, we pray that your spirit will quicken them and that they will repent and trust you as their savior. Lord, may your grace cover their lives so intensely that they recognize you as the almighty God that you are. May each of them have a love for their neighbor and always pursue what is right in your sight. And Lord, as we leave this place, but never your presence, will you make your face shine upon us now and forever. Amen.